Well, hey, hi, Glenn here, workshop at the gardens, and we are out in the sawmill shed, and there's the sawmill right there, the Wood Miser LT15 Electric. So I just wanted to do a quick video. Paul down in Tennessee had some questions about how I did the, got it all to work with electricity. So I, instead of like typing for a half an hour, which I really am not very good at, I figured I would just put a quick video together and show him what I did. So if you didn't watch, it's a good video to watch. I did uh, the whole journey of getting the sawmill here and how this all came about. I literally thought I had a 220 circuit inside my shop. I was going to get this. I was going to put it in the shop. And one thing led to the another and that just was not going to happen. So after that, I decided to put it in this area and then it was electric. So then I needed to cover it. So the quickest thing I could do, yes, I'd love to build a timber frame over this or something, but was to get the metal, uh, carport and make that the sawmill shed um, so it's electric so it's covered so I did that then I needed to get electric here I am gonna turn this camera around yeah just like that technology all these fun things anyways we have had uh, a heck of a run here we had a polar vortex we had a blizzard and then we just had this nasty, nasty snowfall. No, we don't have hundreds of inches, but for us, it's uh, a lot of snow. Um, but, and it's January now, and I haven't, uh, it's the beginning of January. I didn't mill anything over the holidays. I was having some fun getting back here. And with the snow and the lath house, I just haven't had a chance. So, yes, this is kind of just sitting dormant. All right. In that video, you saw that I just decided to pull a whole nother panel here. So I brought a whole 200 amp panel down to here. And I say, I, I dug the trench and got it ready. And I helped my electrician pull the wire through here. Had an electrician help with all of this. That's not my forte. Um, we did add a 100 amp circuit right here. And that heads over to... And this is what I didn't have in the shop. This is one of those important things. Um, I'm gonna point this out that's going on right here. This is my service disconnect going to the mill itself, right over there. When I'm not here, this baby's locked up so nobody can do it. So when I'm milling, I'll take this padlock off, we'll flow it, flip it up, and then I can mill. If not, nobody's running it, nobody's getting hurt. But this is what I didn't have in the shop, and this is what you need. And it is a slow burn fuse. So this is an 80 amp slow burn fuse. This is what's in the manual from Woodmiser. So this got added in. Uh, the electrician made sure that all the gauges of wire are what was needed to operate this. So. If you want me to, leave a comment down in the down below, and I will find out exactly all of the sizing here, but that's done by an electrician. From there, it heads into our plug-in. And same thing, when I'm not milling, I unplug it. All right, so electrician actually did this installation into the control box into this area. The wire goes up into the mass down there, and this is long enough to get all the way over. Currently, when I'm milling, it does drag. It has not been an issue for me. At some point, it will be. Okay, and uh, hopefully this, uh, this is what Paul really wanted to know. There we go, I think it's focusing on that. This is four gauge, number four wire, or cable. There we go. Can't tell you how this thing right in there. Something like that. Four gauge. So uh, the three plug connector. So when I'm ready to start milling, I will just take that, plug it in, take the paddle lock off, throw the switch, and we can mill. 
Now I have some sliding doors. We're gonna do another uh, whole thing about this sawmill shed. We'll deal with that another time. But uh, eventually what I wanna do, Wood Miser talks about, I think it's called Festoon and a cable pulley system that can go in there. We did do this whole cable here is over 30 feet long. So it will go all the way back down. I don't know if I'm gonna do the cable system like they, or I probably what I wanna do is an arm in here with a couple uh, pivots hinges so it can just go back and forth, flow with it. The plan is to put those, uh, some sliding doors, barn doors here so I can actually close it up when it is snowing and raining and still keep milling somewhat out of the elements. All right, turning this back around. All right, hopefully that helps out a little bit on how I just did my setup. This was, I, I did not plan that. I mean, that's probably really obvious. That's not my style to figure this out 100% all the way down to the last fiber or coil or cable or something there. I knew where I want to go. I know what I want to do and get there. The electrician helped and just figuring out each step along the way. Uh, Woodmiser has been extremely helpful uh, figuring this all out. And I have had just a blast milling here. We have a lot of logs to mill, a lot of fun, cool stuff to get to. But what I have found out is every time that you make one like a little advancement and you get a little bit faster in one part of this crazy saw milling log world is um, the next thing in line, you start to back up there. Now I can cut logs faster, but I can't get them stacked and sticker fast enough. So we're working on that, but we are having a blast doing it, making fun stuff. Okay, thanks so much for checking this video out somewhere. I've got a couple of videos that you should watch. Make sure I'm going to uh, see how this works over there, wherever it shows up. There's a video on the journey to getting the sawmill here. And then I uh, check this one out because this is a cool video. That's one about an ash log that I salvaged this summer and milled right away. That's pretty cool. Thanks for following along. Glenn here, workshop at the gardens. Catch you next time. Cheers. No, enjoy. No, cheers. It's Sunday. We're going to have a beer. Cheers.